Hi everybody, this is Thad Allender from Graph Paper Press. Today I'm going to show you how to install and activate our new composition theme for your own WordPress.org website. So after logging into your WordPress site, click Appearance, Themes, and click the Add New button. Now click Upload Theme, and we're going to choose the zip file that we downloaded from the Graph Paper Press website. This is your theme file. Click Open and Install Now. Once the theme has been installed, you'll be able to activate the theme on this page. So click Activate. And after the theme's been activated, you'll notice a little admin message that says, the following required plugin is currently inactive, Jetpack. The following recommended plugins are currently inactive, inactive, Easy Google Fonts and Cell Media. We can activate all of these plugins in one click. So click all the plugins here and click Activate. Jetpack is going to add new custom post types for portfolios and testimonials on the left-hand side of your WordPress site. Easy Google Fonts allows us to easily customize the fonts and choose between over 500 uh, different Google Fonts. Cell Media allows us to sell prints, photos, videos, and other digital downloads directly from your self-hosted WordPress website. So we're going to activate all these plugins in once. Once the plugins have been activated, go ahead and visit your dashboard and then click Jetpack Settings. Scroll over to the writing page and go all the way down to the custom, custom content types. Toggle that on and open this little box and enable Jetpack Portfolio Projects and enable Testimonials for this site as well and click Save Settings. Once you're done there, we need to create your home page and your, blogs, your blog page. So go to Pages, Add New. We're going to create a page for our home page called Home, and we're going to set the template to be the home page template. This is very important. Click Publish. Now we're going to create a page for our blog page. Just call this Blog. This is the page that's going to show all of our blog posts. So any post that you add here will end up being shown on slash blog on your website. It's a good way to kind of split up your site and make things easy to access for your, for your readers. You don't have to assign a template, so just click Publish. Now let's go ahead and assign those pages in WordPress. So go to Settings, Reading, and click a static page for your front page displays option and select the front page to be the home page that we created and your post page to be the blog and click Save Changes. Okay, so once we have Jetpack installed and we have our, your home page configured to show uh, the custom options that we're going to be configuring in a little bit, it's a good idea to download some dummy, some dummy content. You can download uh, dummy content uh, from our readme file there are four different files. There is a, um, there's a file for the portfolio layout. There's a, uh, an XML file for the blog layout. There's an XML file for the store layout, as well as the business layout. So I've already downloaded those on my desktop. So I'm going to go with the portfolio uh, demo for now. So just click Open and Upload File and Import. Um, if you missed how we got here, it's just Tools, Import, uh, then you select WordPress, and then you upload the file. So upload the file. It's going to ask us if we want to create new users. New users. Um, I don't really care, but I do want to download and import file attachments and click Submit. Sometimes downloading dummy content can take a little while, so just be patient, and sooner or later you'll have everything imported. Um, you can see if you've uh, imported things by going to Portfolio. And you can see that all the portfolio entries from our demo site are now there. Similarly, all the blog posts that we have on our demo site are there, as well as pages. Um, even the media has been imported from our, demi, from our demo site. So now that we've verified that we have demo content or dummy content, uh, on your website, we can now start to customize the site um, on the Appearance Customize page. 
So this page allows, the customization page allows you to get a live preview of your website and any changes that you make um, on the site. So you can see that we have an option for typography, so you can change fonts if you'd like. There's over, there's over 500 options, so uh, the best option is just to go to Google fonts.google.com and select a font pairing that you like and then find the font pairing in this topography page. There's a lot of good resources and font pairings online, so if you're looking for help, just type uh, Google Fonts font pairing and you'll see lots of great examples. You have the ability to upload a logo. You can change the header text color and I'll show you in a little while why this is kind of important. Um, this, uh, it's important because if you set a, a, a featured image for your home page, you'll want to make sure that the text contrasts, uh, contrasts with the featured image, otherwise it might kind of blend in together. Uh, when we set a featured image for the home page, uh, I'll show you the problems and how to solve those problems using this colors tab. Um, a header image allows you to select a header image from your site. Uh, menus allows you to assign custom menus to both the top primary area as well as the lower uh, in the footer of your website, the social media links, which would appear right here. Um, if we come back out and if we go to home page options, this is where most of the customization is going to take place on your website. So after you've played around with the home page options, you'll get a sense of the true flexibility of composition and how many different layouts you can achieve just by playing around with these options. Um, if we go back out and we go, if we go down to widgets, widgets um, appear in, in one place on your website. They appear in, in your footer. And by default, WordPress sometimes activates some default widgets, which I like to remove immediately after activating the theme. The last most important area is your menu. If you scroll up to the top, you'll see that we don't really have a menu set, so you can set menus by, in WordPress by going to the customization page, menus, and you can see that, that we have two menu locations. We have a header primary menu that'll show up right here, and then we have a social, a, a footer social, social menu that'll show up right here. Well, those don't have menus assigned to them, and when you import dummy content into WordPress, it will import your menus as well. So in order to see the, the, the menus that we've created on our demo site, we would select the short menu. The short menu is the menu that we created for the navigational elements on our demo site. And if you remember the demo site, it has what's called a mega menu. And this menu is configured to be a mega menu. It's a three level menu. So you have a top level, a second level, and then a third level and there are three links within that third level. And if we were to assign this to the header primary area, I'll show you how all this correlates to what you see in the navigation. So we have a demo link in our navigation, and you can see that there are four columns. There's a portfolio demo, a business demo, stock site demo, and a blog demo. Those links correlate to the second level menu. So portfolio, demo, business demo, stock site demo, and blog demo. Within each one of those menu items are the actual menu uh, links. So we have a portfolio archive, a masonry grid archive, and a blog archive that all show up right here. And you can configure up to four sub-menu items on each mega menu in your WordPress site. So each one of these links could be a mega menu if you'd like, um, with up to four different columns or second level menus underneath them. Okay, there's one other thing that I wanna show you that might be a little confusing if you've never used WordPress before. So let's leave the customization tab and just go to our WordPress dashboard. If you remember, we've created two pages. One page was our home page and one, play, one page was our post page. So we have our blog page set to our post page. If we scroll down and find our home page, let's edit that. So by default, the home page in the composition theme has the ability to show any content that you put 
uh, on it on the, on the home page. So if I were to write some sample copy here, let's say, hey, welcome to my site. And just for, um, just for testing purposes, I'm going to add a shortcode as well, and we're going to we're going to use one of the cell media shortcodes. So we're going to use cell media search because I'm going to show a search box. And we're still set to the home page, but I want to set a featured image so that it adds, it'll add this image as a background image. Um, let's go with, let's go with this guy. And let's click set featured image and click update. So if I were to view the site now, you'll notice that we have a really busy header and some text that's overlaying and a search box right here. Well, that's cool, but man, is that text hard to read. So let's customize that. So go ahead and click the customize link. And let's go to the colors tab and let's change the color, header text color to be white. That's better, but that header image is still really busy. So let's click, uh, let's go back and let's choose another header image. Um, now, if you remember, the header image of this post, this home page, is controlled by the featured image and not necessarily the header image. The featured image of the home page post supersedes the current header image of, that you would set on this page. So in order to change this header image, we have to go back to the home, to the home page itself and change the featured image. So let's do that right now. Let's edit this page. And we're going to remove the current featured image and set a new one. And let's set something that's a little less busy, that's easier on the eyes, and probably contrasts well with white. Um, let's choose this guy and let's set that featured image, update the post, and let's view that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now we've got white text. It's a little bit easier to read. Um, you still have this big search box if you'd like. Um, and you can edit this page to really say whatever. You can see that the home page actually is shown in the front page. So if you wanted to say something here like, hey, welcome to my website. And then you could say, browse around, let me know if you uh, want to work together. And let's update that. Let's view that page again. So now we have the, the title of the page of your home page is now, hey, welcome to my website. And the text is this, uh, browse around, let me know if you want to work together. And we've got a nice big header image that you can change. We also have all of the options still to configure additional sections on the customization page underneath home page options. So it's really just a start. So if you wanted to add a call to action, we could say, hey, let's show this call to action um, between the header area and the, the portfolio area. Let's say, let's work together. Click the button below and let's start a project together. Um, get started for the button text and just something placeholder and you can see that uh, just in a few clicks you've changed your header, you've changed your call to action, you've added a search box to your header, you've added a menu, you can add slideshows if you'd like, portfolios, service sections, stores, blogs, testimonials, clients, and contact info. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this demo and I hope you see the true possibilities with the composition theme. Thanks.